Hey guys, Jacob here, and welcome to some, uh, some thoroughly modded Minecraft. And today we are doing an Alex's Mobs tier list. Um, I've been meaning to do this for a while, so let's hop right into it. This is one of my favorite mods. So we got the Grizzly Bear, among other things. We're just gonna go in order. There's a good few mobs. This might take a little bit. And there's also a bunch of items. But we we can even do this another day if I feel like it. Um, let's also get an item frame. Alright. Uh, Grizzly Bear is first up. Uh, overall, I really like the model on this guy. Like, if the Polar Bear and Vanilla Minecraft look more like this, like, it'd be higher in my book. But, like... Neither of them have an especially big use. This one doesn't like beehives very much. Um, and it'll eat, it'll eat, it'll, uh, it'll attack beehives, I guess. So that's one, that's one mechanic. And the bear's hair has a few crafting recipes. Uh, another thing I think it adds is the bear dust, but that's like a creative item that you can't get. It has like a low chance. It's a meme item. So like good model, good pet, good tame slow to ride actually too so i'm gonna honestly this is kind of like a mid alex this is kind of like your average kind of minecraft mob so uh, we'll put that in the c tier uh next up we have the road runner uh this guy is pretty cute i believe they used to have a different model but uh basically these guys drop road runner feathers and they can be used to craft boots he run faster on sand uh there's already the speed effect and soul speed um, I just want to test this out, how good it really is. Got road in our boots. Some sand. It's pretty fast. But, uh, how often are you really on sand? Not that much. Uh, you could make a, you can make a highway out of this. And I don't think it loses their ability. I haven't tested it. I've never really used the item, so that tells you how useful it is, I guess. Overall, I'd say it's not as good as the Grizzly Bear. It's more of like an aesthetic mob, right? Let's put it in go in D tier. Like it could do without. Like, the mod wouldn't be that effective without it. The Bone Serpent. There we go. They come in different sizes, actually, I wonder. Kind of looks like it. So, these guys are nether mobs. They spawn and swim in lava. And they're also very loud. So, how about we kill them? And also show you one of their drops. They drop a lot, a lot of bone. They also have a chance to drop one of their fangs. And this allows you to brew a potion that um, lets you see better under lava. With the recent create addition, that adds the netherite back tank that's kind of less useful but if you're not playing with create this is still a pretty useful thing let me get the um lava vision potion use some lava buckets and actually show you how this works you can kind of like actually properly see through it so we put like a if we put like a strad pole or later mob in here that normally is under the lava to be able to see it. Um. So yes, a overall like I think it's actually pretty good. Like lava, you can't normally see in, and so um, I reckon. A little more useful than the other mobs because I'm gonna put it also in C tier. Um, actually, it makes and it also makes another a lot more dangerous. So actually, it's gonna go in. It's gonna go in B. It makes another like a harder place to explore, which like it adds that extra bit to the game. I think that's good. Uh, okay. Next up, the gazelle. This is kind of another ambient mob. It drops its horn. When it when you when it dies, it's gonna be used to craft the Alex's mob's handbook, but you spawn with one, so just like don't lose that. Uh, I like how it's shaking its head. I never really examined these guys because they're also kind of useless. That's kind of all they do. 
So they, uh, I believe they also drop mutton. So it's another source of food if you want. So overall, honestly, this might... I've never really considered these guys. I don't think one of them watched. This is going to be our first F tier. Alright. Next we have the Crocodile. These guys have gone through a few remodels. I think the current one is pretty damn good. They are somewhat tameable. If you get their eggs and they hatch, they become... Like, you can tell them to sit or... Like, you can tell them to stay or move around and they'll protect you. Uh, and they drop their scoots, which can be turned into a chest plate that lets you move faster in the water. Actually, pretty good. This one. And actually, I think they just look like cool, good sound design. There's going to be another B here. Solid mob. The fly. How are you still alive over here? You're not, you're not up yet, so I, I kind of showcased you, but you get to live once you exist. Okay. Next up, we have the fly. And this on its own is not that, like, important of a mob. But what it does, it, like, it infects zombies, and when the zombie dies, more flies spawn from it. And then they can also be bred with maggot. They, they can be bred with... Wait, can they be bred? I know they can be bred with something. I just forget what it was. So we're actually going to check using the Alex's Mob's Dictionary. You can right-click on it. And let's... Oh, that's not right. Uh, breed. Okay. Let's see. Do, 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 do. They can be bred with rotten flesh. That's right. So, on their own, not a very like feature-rich mob, but they actually the they drop maggots, and that's used craft like a that's used to breed and craft few things, and they breed a lot of mobs. So that's actually uh, for me, just like the enabling of like reproduction of the mobs and having infinite of them. This is gonna be our first A tier, even though they, they they know the fuck out of me. But like I got I gotta take their their usefulness cannot be undermined. Okay. Hummingbird. Very cute. I have them in my greenhouse on my on my modded world. Uh they come in a different couple of color varieties. I think it's three. And they pollinate crops and flowers. The flowers only do much, they kinda of get particles, but they do make the crops grow faster, I believe. And you can keep them around with a hummingbird feeder. They're kind of an ambient mob. Like, bees probably better at this. So, I'm going to put this in D tier. Okay. Next up, Orca. Biggest mob we've had so far, by far. This thing is going to drown in a little bit, but we'll look at it while we can. Uh, it gives you the Orca's Might effect when you're near it in water. Which gives you, I believe, Strength. And, uh... Oh, let me get for that, yeah. There's a bunch of achievements you give them in encountering these mobs. But, um, good sound design. Uh, good effect if you're in water. It helps you with drowned, I suppose. They also, like, will kill seals and everything. But overall, so I think, I think there's gonna be another seat here. Because, like, they don't actually do much as well. Okay. Uh, next one. We're gonna, we're gonna see this one for approximately three seconds before it's gone. This is the sunbird, and uh, what it does is it basically just flies real high in the sky. That's gonna go above the clouds, I believe. It's gonna it's probably out of render distance, actually, and it kind of flies around. Yeah, there it goes. Uh, flies real high in the sky, and gives and if you have an elytra and you're near it, it gives you an effect like kind of like slow falling. It, it makes your elytra better, and you fall slower. And if you hit it, it makes you drop to the ground and die. Uh, it's very very rare, very hard to find. And so it's kind of a collector item. Like it stays near beacons is what it tends to do. Uh, that's kind of the allure is you can have it near your beacon and you can fly off and have extra elytra flight. So, as a collector item, as a use, pretty good. It's kind of like, it's kind of like a rare specimen. So it's kind of a big flex, so you have one. I'll put that in eighth here. Alright, next up. We have the gorilla, big monkey. And we got a, we got, we got a uh, silver back as well. Let's see if we can get a tiny one. Are they all here, like... Oh, yeah, okay, so... You can get babies, they can ride on the backs. Yeah, and here is a regular, like, regular one. Uh, basically you can tame these guys and you can make them a sit or wander. 
and they will defend you. They're actually really strong. They eat bananas, they're bred with bananas, they're tamed with bananas. And uh, they're a good like mob to have wandering around your base. They defend you from mobs and whatnot. Um, and also they're just monkeys. They're really cool. So I think that's going to be... Well, they, I call them monkeys. They're apes. But but monkey, the meme. They're like a meme monkey. So I'm going to give them an eighth here. Okay. This is a crimson mosquito. It's going to get pissed at one of these guys. Yeah, it's killing the baby. And then it gets one shot by the gorilla because it's so awesome. It's because so, the gorilla is so awesome. Uh, crimson mosquitoes. They suck your blood. They spawn in the crimson forest. They're like, honestly, the most annoying mob in Alex's mobs. I hate these guys. Uh, actually, just like every time I go into the Nether, it's like it's it's just it's just a massive like fuck you to me. Like, F tier. I could do without. Next up, we have the rattlesnake. Uh, if we go into survival mode, you'll see that it actually doesn't like me being near it, and it'll coil up. Oh, this crocodile is mad at me a little bit, I think. Chill! Chill! Okay. But, like, it'll get mad at me, and it'll bite me, you'll get poison. Pretty bad poison, too. And if you kill them, they drop their rattle sometimes, which can be used to make them rocka. The Maraca has another use, which I will show you when we get to another mob that I absolutely love, so it's going to go in B tier. Good ambient mob as well for the deserts. Okay. Ender grade. This guy is adorable. Totes adorbs. Love him. How high? He's probably going to go... I don't know. He might go pretty high here. Uh, This with, like, AI stuff. Um, Because we're so low in the world. In the super flat world. So, basically, what you can do, you get a saddle, and get a chorus fruit on a stick. He's way up there. Let's just go back down and spawn another. What you can do, saddle these guys up, you can actually ride them. They can, they can go up, they can go down, and basically... It's just really, it's like riding a pig in the nether, really slow. And, but, this allows you to go over the void. And, it's like, actually OP. I used it to get my first elytra, basically just going in a straight line on them until I found a ship. Actually, if you're in the end, and you find one of these, and you find a group of these guys, you're just set, and you have a saddle on you, you're just set. Like, honestly, S tier. That's our first S tier. Easy elytra. Okay. Hammerhead Shark. Uh, sharks in Minecraft, Mojang said no, Alex said yes, he gave us the hammerhead shark. And what this does is it'll, it'll only attack mobs that are under half health, and when it does, there's a chance of dropping its teeth. Its teeth can be crafted into arrows, which fly faster under water. Otherwise, not too much, like, who, if you have a riptide trine or a loyalty trine, if you have a loyalty trine, like, you basically have an underwater bow anyway. And it's kind of hard to get there. a lot of their teeth. Um, and they, they spawn in warm oceans. So, and they, like, eat the mobs that I would rather be taming. So, honestly, kind of an, a C -tier, eh, D tier mob. Cool to have a shark, though. Like, I'm not, I'm not going by how much I like them. I'm going by their use. Okay, lobsters. Yep, there's a blue. That's one of the features right there. Red. Blue, blue, and red. Can we get a yellow one? Let's see if we can get a yellow one. They're pretty rare. That's why, I, and so I spawned all those and didn't even see one. Uh, basically, uh, this guy, this guy, uh, drops lobster tails. You can cook them for a good source of food. They spawn in beaches, so they're not too hard to find. And these are used to tame and breed a lot of mobs. So, just for their use, they're going to also go... Um, this is the fly, right? Honestly, better than the fly, so we're going to put that in A tier as well. Okay! Komodo Dragon. This one, pretty fun mob. Uh, you can tame it, but it's naturally aggressive. It takes, a, it takes two stacks of rotten flesh to tame them on average. 
they'll eat the entire stack out of your hand. And they inflict poison, they, 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 they like to kill everything. If I give him, like, a pig, you'll get very mad. And they see the pig is poisoned. Yep. Uh, and he's actually going around eating those, I think. Let me see. He eat, then he ate those food items off the ground. You can tame them. I'll actually do this, like I just said. Rotten flesh. Come here, buddy. Yep. Uh, sat, you can saddle them up. You can ride them around. And they're actually like a decently fast mount. And they can defend you and themselves pretty nicely. So honestly, not that bad an alternative to a horse. They can also follow you. And that's how they stay. And it's a pretty cute sitting animation. Honestly, I'm going to put this one. I love these guys. They're so cool. I'm going to put them in eight. So like that also contributes to it. But like their, their use as a good alternative to the horse. They spawn in sparse jungles. So I'll put them in eight here. Alright. Next up. Capuchin monkey. Also tameable. Like they come in a few varieties. Like this golden one. That one. This one. I think there's one more. Yep, that one. Um, They can also be tamed. They like these. They like these a lot. As you can see. They'll come over and be like, what's up? And then you can tame them. And they'll sit down sometimes. Ooh, they're taking a lot. Alright. You can put them on your shoulder. And they'll actually, like, attack things. Like, well, let's get to, let's get to attack this alligator. The rock, they'll throw rocks at him. The alligator will get mad at this guy, though, so like, it might kill it off my shoulder. Yeah, and then the alligator will death roll it, so not that useful. But, 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 but. Uh, there is a game. A, a legendary game. Can you, can you stop that, by the way? I want to get him back. Yeah, bro. Okay. Uh, there is a game. No by the name of Bloons. What do you want? Where are you going, bro? Hey. Hey. No, no. Hey, hey. You you follow. And you can give them this dart. And they become the enemy to all balloons, but also all, all monsters that you wish to kill. Four, they now throw these darts, which do piercing. And more damage. Uh, it's dead, though. Uh, <laughs> they can be killed off your shoulder, which means you have to stay a little bit away from what you're fighting if you want them to be uh, valuable. Or you can have them just as a group, and they'll kind of stay back. So actually, like decent for combat, you find these darts in um, jungle temples in the that wishes the biome in which they spawn the jungle. So actually, a decent mob. We're gonna put it in eight here. Also, it's a monkey, good pet. Okay. Next up, we ended on capuchin. Okay. Oh, we got we got we got a few interesting ones in this next batch. First up, we have the cave centipede. This is a hostile mob spawning in the deep caves. You can see it's got it's got those multi-segmented body. And uh it drops its legs, which can be used to oh wow, that was terrifying. Uh it can be crafted into a leggings that can make that allow you to climb walls. These things are terrifying. They make caves more dangerous, they inflict awful poison. But uh I think overall, like like, the leggings can be good for building. I haven't actually thought about that. If you need to get up a wall or just general adventuring, put it in C tier because they're terrifying. Alright. One of my favorite mobs, actually. Just personally, I love these. These are the warped toads. You can tame these guys with crimson larva, crimson mosquito larva. And they'll eat mosquitoes for you. So, we, so this is actually one of my favorite mobs because it counters. Hey, hey, do me a favor, buddy. Yeah, he's mad. Yep, he's, and he's in a, that one's going pretty high. But watch this; it's gonna come back down, maybe, and it'll eat it. Uh, but you saw how it extended its tongue there and like killed it. So, honestly, a very fun mob to have. Makes if you have one with you in the nether, it makes exploring easier. Frogs are cute. A tier. All right, moose. Next up on the list, 
Um, they're pretty fun. Where? Oh, what the heck? We found something that went wrong there. Um, basically, can I? See? Oh, oh, what the? It like ate it, bro. Maybe we got some bugs here. Can you just eat things? Is that a th I, okay, wait, no way. Um, you, uh, A tier? I didn't, you can just devour mobs. Is that a creative only thing? Holy shit. <laughs> yeah, so moose, pretty powerful. Frog, more powerful, obviously. Uh, oh, it sends it up in the air, it looks like. So because of that, that cool bug there, uh, I guess we're giving it an A tier. The moose, though, that's what we're on. Where did everything go? We're just going to re-get our items here. We, we ended on... Okay, sorry about that. Got myself killed. Yeah, okay. Frog go frog go uh crazy with it. Okay, the moose it drops its antlers sometimes passively. You can't kill them for it, and it drops ribs. So the ribs are a pretty good food source. What moose moose ribs, pretty good food source. You can like get a bunch of moose bread up. And the antlers give you knockback. So like I get the headdress you'll see I knock mobs pretty far back you can visit that guy too that'd be funny okay so that's pretty cool not actually that bad uh, they spawn in the snowy plains they kind of just chill unless you attack them and I wish they because they kill you as you saw what happened to me uh, the knockback's pretty fun if you like that. I'm not the hugest fan of knockback unless I'm fighting a creeper. So, I think... But for the food, which is also used to breed still leopards, which are pretty neat, i put this guy in B tier. Okay. Mimic cubes. This is a big one. Hello again. Uh, this is actually just, like, a, a huge one. So, the mimic cube. I mean, when it's killed. It, well, when it's attacked... You need to, you, you're gonna need to do that for a second. When it is hit, it will copy your armor and your weapon, even your offhand. So if you have a shield, it becomes pretty much invincible. Um, but when it's killed, it has a chance to drop this. This is Mimic Cream. If you get eight Mimic Cream and you surround an item, it will duplicate it perfectly with zero, with like one durability. So if you have like a max enchanted armor set, and you have a bunch of Mimic Cream, you can just make more of that with Mimic Cream. They, they spawn, like, continuously. Like, they, you can make a farm out of them in end cities. Like, sh how Shulkers don't respawn. They just generate. Mimic Cubes, they spawn. So, you can make a, in theory, you can make a farm for Mimic Cream. And just get all of the nether gear you wanted. So, basically, this is a nest here. And it's, like, it's really hard to fight sometimes. Alright, next up, the Raccoon. Also tameable. It likes eggs egg but the caveat to that if you want to tame it is you need some water nearby when they have food they like to wash it come here buddy yeah and they also do this it's adorable here take that oh buddy no no, no. you take this how about this take See the water? I want to show this off because they're pretty. It's pretty cute. You need more? Or was it bread? I gotta check this. Hmm. 
came up a chicken egg near water. Yeah. Says what? Says what? Maybe you gotta be in survival for them to do it. Oh. I don't know. Normally this works. I have tamed them in my survival world. But normally they wash their food. I'm sorry I can't. I can't. I'm sorry I can't get them to do it right now. We'll leave the eggs over there. Um. Oh. They drop a tail, which can be used to make a frontiersman cap. You need bear hair for that as well, and a leather cap. It mean gives you movement speed while sneaking. Are you gonna do it, buddy? You're in the water. Nah, you're not gonna do it. Okay. Um, they can defend you. They can be given. You can give them little bandanas with um carpets. It's pretty cute. I'm gonna put them. Let's see if you're a decent thing. They don't actually do that much, though. All right, Blobfish. Hello. Uh, let's give him a slime ball so he sticks around. Now, if you get if, now these guys look way different if they're under ten blocks of water. I'm not about to make a big water column, so they look. They're just gonna look goofy for the time being. Uh, they kind of flop around in deep oceans, but they have to be real deep. Like if you have to find a deep ocean, and then you have to find a water cave. Under that deep ocean, if you want them to really spawn. Uh, what they do is, hello, is they drop themselves blob. You can also put them in a bucket if you if you feel like it, if you feel so inclined. Bring them back home, and this can be used with enough of it. Uh, blob fish and a crafting table. I believe you need three. And it makes, with a bottle, I'm an idiot, it makes, uh, what is it called? Uh, fish oil. Is it four? It is four. Fish oil. Um, this speaks for itself, I, th I think this is a thing. Yep. Oiled. Wait, wait for it to rain. Oil floats in water. Cover yourself in oil. Fly. Yep. Uh, this is the meme. You can also use the tame bald eagles. A uh, pretty funny application. Otherwise, does not do much. But for the humor, we're gonna put it in A tier. This is actually incredibly annoying. I need milk. Actually, no. I can just weather here. All right, so next up we have the seal. These guys come in a few varieties, few different colors. If they're in the if they're in the um, cold ocean, they are they become like white seals. Uh, they have cute babies as well, very cute babies. So, what do these guys do? You give them. Uh, I believe it is fish. We can actually read up the entry because I haven't used the mechanic. What it does is they'll be attacked by orcas. But they can be like bartered with in exchange for fish. The seal will scrounge to see a different item in return. It is usually it is usually kelp or sand, but it can also be shark teeth, scoots, or nautilus shells. And you can breed them with lobster tails. So in theory, you can make a lobster tail, a nautilus shell farm, which is normally treasure from fishing or drowned. So actually, could be pretty useful for in a farm, in the farm side. I'll put it in B. Uh oh, you poor, oh you poor thing. Okay. Oh, you are in B tier. All right, cockroach. Next up. These guys are scared. They don't like light. Let's get it like a cave. And it'll probably come down here. Uh, if you give them bread, they will pacify. Wait, and they just instantly eat this shit. 
And they drop Uthikas sometimes, which can be thrown like an egg to make more cockroaches. Uh, the fun thing about these guys is they aren't just gross. They also drop cockroach wing fragments, which can be crafted into a cockroach wing and then brewed. Um, let me see. It can be brewed into a potion of, I believe it is knockback resistance. Yes. They can also lose their heads sometimes if you fight them. And if they get on low health, sometimes they'll lose their heads. Like, like there, like it lost its head kind of at the end there. Yep, uh, that one does no longer has a head and it's still alive. Uh, okay, other big thing. Come to me, my roaches. Come to me. And now, dance! Can I turn up music for you guys? That jukebox is pretty low. This is S tier. And that puts it in easy S, yes. No more needs to be said on that topic. Uh, I'm gonna take that back and you can go to being scared again. Okay! More mobs. We ended on the cockroach. Okay. Alright, next up. Shubil! These guys are fun. Uh, you might know these as the bird that makes funny noises and is big and terrifying and looks like a dinosaur. Uh, put them in water. And sometimes they catch fish. I believe this can also be treasure, but I have yet to make a farm to replicate it. But in theory, you could get a book farm that just like always works. Like, like a fishing farm that gives you all kinds of treasure. So, in theory, these guys are actually S tier. If not, my placement would change to more like a D. Because they are rare, you can't breed them. And they spawn in swamps. Okay. Next up, we have the Elephante. The elephant. This one comes with tusks, but we can't actually tame it. But we can get one with tiny ones. That's acacia. And get an acacia blossom. Oh yeah, you want that. There you go. You are mine. What are you doing? Oh, you don't like cockroaches. Oh, that's funny. But you can ride it. Pretty fast. Pretty powerful if I punch a seal here. Yep, there you go. I believe... You can't really command it to do anything. I kind of just like... Kind of does its own thing. But... Really clear. I don't want this uh, thunderstorm going on. But um, the, the tusks ones you can only obtain by taming a calf that grows up into a tusked elephant. If you give it wheat while you're riding it, or it's not even when you're not, it'll do a charge attack and like mow down enemies, which does a lot of damage. So that's pretty cool. You can ride it around, and sometimes a wandering trader, if it spawns in a savanna biome, can, have, can be on a wandering elephant, which uh, will have a chest on it, which you can put chests on them normally as well. And that chest can have like some loot in it from Alex's mobs and other things. Uh, I'm going to put this one in eight here. Next up, Soul Vulture. You don't like living things, I believe. Uh, I, and you're mostly aggressive to players, actually. Uh, basically, it drops a Soul Heart, which does something. Never gotten it. It's kind of hard. It needs to attack you a few times and like charge up its soul. It also has Lifesteal. Uh, kind of annoying, but a cool mob nonetheless. We'll put it in C tier. Okay, Snow Leopard. This guy's fun. Very cute. Can't tame it, but it does get the looting effect when it kills mobs. So we get a pig. You know what it is? You know what it's really gonna like? Oh, the sheep. Hello? Why do you have like no AI, buddy? Oh, there you go. That got us two pork. That got us two mutton. 
And you see how it jumps? And that got us five Rob Work Tops. There you go. That's it gets a looting effect. Oh, it's going for the seal too. Oh no, that was the Kushin monkey. Is it also going for the yeah, and so it'll kill small mobs and it'll get a looting effect on it. It'll do a leap. And they spawn in the snowy areas, snowy biomes. But overall, like you can just get a leap. So like, you could find some way maybe to make a farm out of that, but it also kills the babies, I'm pretty sure. Like, watch this. Yeah, it kills babies, so it's kind of hard to make a farm. So overall, this guy is kind of a, a kind of a yeah. I'm, you can breed it with moose ribs as well, but like honestly, this is like it, I like the I like big cats, but kind of have to go in deep here. Vector. Bye. We're never seeing that again. Spawns in the end. It might actually come back down. Real real talk, and then um. We're gonna need a lead to demonstrate. This spawns in the end. Huh. Yep, basically it'll just randomly take you places. Um, you can't lead it to a fence when you have it on it. It's it is in complete control here. Um basically it acts like a mount that you don't really control and get to free ride. Honestly. This is a worse ender grade. I am putting it in the F tier because it just annoys me in the end. Okay, the crow. Hello. You like pumpkin seeds, don't you? Let's get you. Let's get you, let's get you um, uh, juiced up on that. Hmm. Eat. Ah, right, you are now tamed. Yeah, you like that. And it'll stand on your shoulder too, like a parrot. You have to shift to get it off. And, uh, let's have you stay. It can gather items. It can wander. And it can follow. Surprise, it's not getting killed. Um, basically, if you give it a hay bale, it'll stay in the area of the hay bale if it lands on it. Go, you stop this. Stop, stop. I'll take it, thank you. Thank you. If you put it on a hay bale, it'll heal one. That it'll do that. It'll heal. It'll, you'll, you'll see that with some particles, and then two, it'll fly around. If you put it on the gathering items option, it'll kind of circle the hay bale, and it'll pick up like items that you drop. And then get a chest. I believe this is how this works. I've never used it because there are better ways to make sorting systems. But let's say we get a chest here. Item frame. Boom. Chest here. Item frame. Oh. Item frame. I'm being an idiot. Boom. It'll put it in the chest. And it'll gather. And it'll put things in the chest mark with that. So basically, in theory, what you could do. Thank you for thank you for that. Um, what you could do is, like, in your storage system, have a crow on a barrel. Or on one of these things. And just toss all your items down, and in 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 theory, it would sort them for you, um, buddy. You have some things to be, get, to be doing. Can you pick up all of them, or you just pick up one? You pick up one. Hilarious. But maybe don't do what I just said you should do. But it does it pretty fast, and it seems like they don't fly during rain. That's kind of cool. That's kind of a way to make a storage system, right? That's kind of neat. You can wander now and be free. Alright. So for that, it goes in... I think this is like a... I think this is a... It's kind of like an LA, but better. So I'm going to put in... I'm going to put it in B tier. I put an LA in C or D for that record. Alright, next up. Alligator snapping turtle. Oh, it spawned with shit on its back. Is it always gonna do that? No, it's not. Uh, good. Uh, good thing that we got the shit on its back. Otherwise, we have to wait days for it to get that. Uh, boom. Boom. Give me the special item, please. No. No. I want. I want to get this the real way. There we go. That is a spike scoot. Are you good? Hi. 
Uh, basically, these guys are aggressive if you get too close to them. But you can shear them after they accumulate moss and they have a chance. They can give you seagrass or you can drop a scoot. Uh, the scoots can be crafted. Yeah, see, it's pissed because it got too close. My uh, turtle, my frog is going to die now. Yeah, it killed the stork too. Uh, the, 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 the scoot thing gives you the ability to make a better helmet. What is it called? Turtle. Spiked turtle helmet. It gives you knockback resistance too. And, um, I believe also more time underwater than the regular turtle helmet. So, I just deleted the thing. Oh, I have them in my survival world in a little pen. They're kind of nice to have around. It's like, like, people keep these as, pet, as pets in real life. It's kind of terrifying. Um, stabbing turtles in general, not specifically the alligator. Oh, uh, this is a seat tier. Oh my god, it's here. We have the Mungus! This is the Among Us reference mob. It is kind of like a guardian ex-villager, and it likes mushrooms. It'll grow mushrooms, you can put mushrooms on it, and it'll grow them up. Uh, and also, if we get a name tag, and an anvil, let me call it Rip, maybe? This randomly, no, for no, for no reason. Oh my god, he got fucking sneakers on. How did that happen? I never would have expected such a reference. Wow. S tier just for that. Okay, next up, we ended the Among Us. So now we have these. Look at all these uh, all this stuff we're accumulating in this world. Wow, we're gonna start lagging soon. I'm sure with all these mobs. Any cockroaches down here? No, they did not care, bro. They just left. Alright. Mantis shrimp. It'll dry out eventually unless you give it a bucket. It's tameable. It can break blocks for you. It spawns on the coral reef. Very nice pet. I haven't actually tried this. Let's get some... Grass. Right. And let's get some... We need. We need tropical fish. And it's gonna take a lot. Boom. Oh, what the fuck? Why you hate? Why you hate, bro? Toxic. Take. Yeah, I give. There we go. Watch this. Oh, that activated when it wasn't supposed to. As you can see, it'll break these blocks and it'll actually drop the item. So you can use that in stone farms. And if we give it some stone. Break. Break. And then also you can give it a water bucket. And it'll be able to live on land. If you combine this with the with the amphibious thing. If you if you can combine this with the amphibious enchant from domestication innovation, it doesn't need that, and it can live on land forever. And you can get a stone farm going. So, um, but even without that, you in theory make a stone farm underwater, and then, or a wood farm underwater with a mangrove trees, probably. Mm. If you found some way to get this, it's easy to push stone with a piston underwater and wood. That's my point. Okay, weather clear. This is annoying the fuck out of me. And, game rule, do weather cycle false. So, stop doing that. Uh, this is gonna be an S tier mob for me. Alright. Next up is the Guster. These guys- Oh, you're doing this even to me in certain creative, that's annoying. These guys are annoying mobs that spawn in the desert when it's raining in the world. They're hostile. And they drop sand and possibly an eye. And they, the guster can be used to make a gust maker, which, if powered with redstone, it does a little thingy, my bobber. 
Boom. It pushes items pretty far, actually. How far does this go? That far. And it pushes items. So basically, if you didn't want to water, it pushes mobs too, as you can see. So basically, if you didn't want a water ele like elevate, like a water conveyor belt, you could use one of these. Probably makes more lag with the particles, though, to be honest. Um, but yeah, that's kind of useful, but also could use water, so it's gonna be see here. Actually, no, it's 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 annoying, bro. I'm it's that's going D. Like it's also just like hard to deal with. It's an inconvenience in the desert at night. Or not at night, we're going to spawn. Oh, boss time. This is the warped Moscow. Boom, big buff man. He flies to... Uh, he's going to get mad at things. Um, He's going to get mad at everything. Uh, he's going he's gonna to do some suck suck. He got regen from that. Yeah, OP. He's a boss. He drops warped lymphs. Basically, what you craft with him is a pretty cool gun. Where would it go? He, you craft the Hemolymph Brassler, which is an upgrade from the Blood Sprayer. It does a little projectile like this. It never breaks. You just have to you just have to kill more bosses to get more blood sacks from them to regenerate to regenerate it when it runs out of their ability. But yeah, you can like shoot it some ways. It's like a, it's kind of like a cool projectile weapon. He's gonna go and kill every mob in this world for me. Thank you actually for the culling. Boom. He does a lot of damage. Pretty hard boss, but I did beat him in one world. Not after dying a couple, th a couple times, though. Overall, it's nice to see more bosses in the game. We're actually going to put him next here. He's also, like, a big buff guy. He's kind of like a reference to the Minecraft. To, not the Minecraft. He's a, he's a reference to the um, Pokemon, I believe. The red one. That's an Alolo that I didn't play. Okay, Straddler. Um, fuck this guy if you're in a Basalt Delta. What he does is really annoying. And it's gonna kill me. Ow. He flings Stradler Strad pulls at you. Yeah, thank you for helping me. Kill, please. Um As you can see Very annoying mob. Very hard to deal with. He can also float on lava like a strider. But, 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 he gives you the straddle board. Basically, you get some, it's a, it's a expensive crafting recipe. It requires, if like, three netherite and um, some of, an item that he drops. He also drops basalt, so you can, in theory, make a basalt farm. But basalt is already renewable. So, not necessary. Uh, lava, straddle board, my friend. Um, what is this bug that is happening today? How high are we gonna go? That's pretty high, bro. What did I see? Why is this not working? Interesting. Interesting. I would like to show you this, but apparently it doesn't feel like working. I guess there's a few bugs with mods that I have that have broken it. Maybe it's Super Flat World, maybe it's some other things. But this is a fun item. So it's all, it's gonna go, it's gonna go. It's so annoying, but the but you can get a cool item from it. So I'm gonna put it in A tier because otherwise it would be S if it weren't annoying. Uh, the Stradpole is the baby version of these guys. Um, oh, hi, can I ride you, please? Oh, it's working now, kind of. No, it's not. Maybe it needs to work in the Nether. Uh, Nether portal time. Alright, 
Let's see if this works. Yep. Really fast way to get across stuff. And you can also get, there's also enchantments for it. Alright. Very cool. Where is my portal? Um. That's what. I guess there was an issue with the overworld. Uh, that's the straddle board. Stradpole, which I just got rid of. We showed you it earlier. They uh, they live in lava. They're kind of fun. This cute little things for your aquarium, right? Which uh, they're gonna get eaten by this fucking snapping turtle because there's an asshole. But you can't put them in an aquarium. They can live fine in water. And, um, they can be grown up using Crimson Mosquito Larva into Straddlers. Overall, it's kind of this good thing for an aquarium. So it's going to go in after you. Where, wait. Why did I, where, where, where did these things go? I had other things in F tier. The, the Crimson Mosquito... And the specter. Okay. Strapple, that's it. Emu. The they won a war. What in the fuck? My guy. Okay. They can dodge projectiles, so if I get a bow, crossbow or something. See that? Like, they, they, they're they immune to projectiles. Because, uh, they won the emu war. That's the, that's the, that's the reward they get. They drop eggs sometimes. They have cute kids. Cute little baby emus. And they can be bred. They drop, I believe. I don't know. We will test this. Show me. Feathers and emu feathers. That's right. Emu feathers can be crafted with kangaroo leather. To make pants that give you a chance to dodge projectiles. So pretty good if you're fighting skeletons. They also attack skeletons sometimes. Overall, C tier mob. It's kind of mid. Like if, if something's on the middle here and then and C tier, that's what I go for a good mob that that just like doesn't have a whole lot of use. Alright, next up the platypus. We get a name tag. You can probably guess where this is going if you're like a big brain or like like me. You're, if you're a cultured individual. And even as a fedora to boot. Basically, you give these guys a... Uh, okay, let's give them some clay. And then let's get some redstone. And I'll also demonstrate what they can also do. They can dig for items in clay. If they're, I, I don't know if they need to be underwater. They might need to be underwater. But yeah, if you give them a redstone block. They go kind of nuts. And they can dig in the clay. And they'll get you clay balls. And they'll get you maggots. And sometimes a fedora. You want to do it for me, buddy? No, I've seen him do it. I promise it happens. <laughs> um, so they give me an infinite clay farm, I suppose. Although we also have that with 1.18 with or 190 with mud, you make renewable clay. But this is like it gets clay balls for you, not the block. You have silk touch. Uh, it also gets maggots or renewable maggots. So the fly technically is not that important if you use a platypus. You make anything yet? We'll come back. We'll check you out later. Uh, let's give you a B tier. Okay. Let's see. Do you want to do something for me? This next, this next guy. I want to see something. Yep. Okay, this is the drop bear. Hostile mob spawns in the nether. If you're below it, oh my god, 
it will fall down. Oh, yep, there you go. It'll fall down on top of you, do a little splash damage, and then start attacking you. It drops claws. Drop air claws. We crafted into a cool weapon with some other things, the tendon whip. Can attack multiple mobs. It has a long range. Look at how far away I can attack this from. Boom. 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 A very long one, but you gotta be careful because you could hit something you don't mean to attack. So only use this if you're like caving and there's a bunch of mobs around you. Uh, but because of the, that ability, it's one of the, it's one of the parts of the tendon rip, whip, and it's not that annoying to fight either. You can, you can, it's easy to spot as well. It's on the roof. The roof isn't that hard in the nether. It's pretty flat. I'm actually going to give it a beat there. Alright. This video is getting close to an hour. Hopefully we're almost done. Where's Drop Bear? Still have a lot to go. Alright, next up. Alright, Tasmanian Devil. This guy's fun. Because if you give him rotten flesh, he uh, howls. And mobs don't like that. That that gets them pissy. Nice and almost scared. And it'll actually run away. So if you're ever getting howled, like hounded by mobs, and there's a Tasmanian Devil nearby, Give him some rotten flesh, it'll piss off the mobs. Okay, so otherwise it didn't do that much, and you just kill the mob. So, they're gonna go deep here, even though they're cute. Next up, Kangaroo! Uh, let's get some carrots for this boy. You like that, don't you? We do a little trolling, I don't really get that. But... Alright, if you have, it has a pouch. It also stores its babies in there. When you breed them, it drops kangaroo meat, which can be turned, cooked and then turned into a burger, which is amazing food. Gives you tons of saturation, tons of have food, food bars. And also. Also, also, also. We get. Uh. This. He will wear the armor. It can be enchanted as well. Fight. Yep, and it'll basically get really powerful. So, pretty good thing to actually come with you to fight. If he has armor, it's not really going to die. And if you get the sword, it does tons of damage. And it's also just a fun mob. It makes good food. This is an A tier. Oh, not the Enderio Phage. The Kangaroo. Okay, this is a fun one. It's also going to die. This is the Catchlot Whale, the biggest mob in the game. Bigger than the Ender Dragon, I believe. It's also beached, and if you get it back on the water, it'll give you Ambergris. Ambergris can be crafted with some other items into a compass that shows you caves, which can be crafted into something that just points you towards an end city, which can be crafted, or it can be crafted into something that points you towards a devil puffish. It's a lot of crafting. It also eats squid and giant squid, which can give tentacles and teeth. Uh, it's a fun mob. It'll and it also one shot you and pull another red armor, so that's great. Uh, S tier. Not much to say about that one besides all there is to say about it. Leaf cutter ants. Uh, these guys are fun. If we give them a leaf, um. We give a pu so basically you can get a pupa. They generate and they generate like um in jungles. Yeah, they are. What are you mad at? Oh, is it an enemy? What are you, what are, what are, they're pissed at something, bro. Oh, probably because it fought it. Yeah, right. Now there's nothing left but the queen. 
and the queen you kill for pupa or you can dig up this block here which is a little cutter ant chamber uh if they eat enough uh of these leaves and then put them back in the hive it can make some fungus for you that you can eat which gives you good pet saturation yeah so they do that a lot they're, they're having fun i don't know where you're going bro you, I, I really don't know where I, what are you doing come back to your hive bro uh, leaf cutter ants, fun little pets to keep if you want, and they eat you good food. But, like, other than that, like, there's better food options. So it's gonna be. It makes it, it, gives, it gives a unique mob to the jungle and makes it more lively. We're gonna put it. B tier. Enderiophage. Uh, it looks like this in the overworld. In the end, it looks different. In the nether, it looks different. Um, basically. These things are aggressive. Oh, well, not aggressive. If you get too close, I think they are. But if you kill them, you get this, a capsid. And if you put certain things in it, like... Like a cod. Then it, uh, turns in different items. Or, you can have it levitate. It'll actually move items upward. And I want to see something. Yeah, no. So I don't know how you get it out. It, will it move up into a dropper? Or a dispenser? Yes, it will. So you have... This can also be used for an item elevator. If you don't, if you want items to stay and like and not use a bubble column. They also give the ender flu to, thing, to things that they attack. And if you die with Ender Flu, it spawns more Enderiophages, and then they like then they attack Enderman to get their charge back. So once they fight, once they attack once, they can't attack again until they steal an Ender Eye from an Enderman. Um, kind of fun. Let's see your mob. It actually, no, it gives the end um, like a unique mob. This is also going in B tier. Okay. Next up, one of my also favorites, the Bald Eagle. You tame it with fish oil. No, you're going for something. Okay, you like this, don't you, though? Freedom intensifies. So you're going to follow me, buddy. I'm going to get falconry going. We need a glove, and we need a hood. You give him a, you, you give him a um thing, and then also, you, so you can have him on your like, little hand here. This is pretty fun. Carry him around. And you can also, what do we want him to attack? How about this guy? He'll fly off and attack mobs for you. So he's probably going to die to the snapping turtle. Okay. And then he'll come back, actually, once he kills the mob. If you, then you let him go and like, find on hand again. You can also put him in your offhand. But, like, you need to take off the thing from the drop. You give him a hood and you hit, and you hit him off the hand. You can control him. And when he goes near a mob, he'll attack it. Boop. Boop. Dead. And then if you press shift, it'll come back. So overall, a pretty fun mob. Uh, Wander, you're free. I think you have a hood, though, so you're not going to do shit. Uh, shears. There you go. Now you're free to go. Uh, this is... Probably an 8th year... Because it gives you, like, it can go up to, like, 100 blocks away. It's pretty cool. Um, Perry over there is still freaking out. That's kind of funny to me. Uh, next up, the tiger. You're going to get pissed at some things around here, I'm sure. Until you, oh, no, there's nothing nearby, so you're going to lay down and chill. Um, I love this. I love the model. And, oh, yeah, no, it's going for my kangaroo. Which, what wins here, actually? The kangaroo wins because of the nether armor and sword. But normally the tiger would actually win. The tiger, like, even in full enchanted armor, even if it's netherite, like, it still does decent damage and it can pin you down. Not to be trifled with. Unless you have chicken or some other raw meat. And if you give it that, hey, buddy. Pick. It'll just eat until it's enough. And it'll give, you, it'll give you the tiger's blessing, which allows you... Have stronger attacks. Like, watch this. 
I think it like sometimes it allows you to like scare the mobs that you're attacking into not being able to move. And it'll also attack with you. But you need to refresh it every um few minutes. Mm, you, another mob it also spawns in the jun bamboo jungle. Okay, A tier. Alright, next up, another fun mob. The tarantula hawk wasp. These things don't like spiders. That's what they eat in real life. And they do it quite well. They paralyze the spider. So it cannot move. It also, like... And then they'll slowly come around and kill it. If we get some sand... And some spider's eyes... And get a few of these. They take a lot. Where is the other one? Hello? We got another one. Can you stop? Sting. Are well, you both following me? Good. Wait, why are you wandering? Following. Okay, breathe. And now they need a spider. And one of them will take the spider. It, and it should. Because they bred, and so it should have an egg in it now or something. And it should take the spider. Maybe we get another one. Okay. Now breathe. And one of them takes, and he takes the spider, drags it to the sand. And if there's enough room, buddy. I really want to show you guys this because it's really cool. They should bury the spider in the sand. While they're, like, the, like so they should find a way to place to bury it. There you go. And it turns into a larva like this. And which will eventually grow up. into a regular tarantula hawk. But uh, yeah, it's really neat. And if you do it in the nether, it'll also become a different variety. Why are you, why are you doing that, buddy? Um, and that, that'll grow up eventually. Well, are you staying? Okay. And you, friend, stay. And you... What are you doing? Alright. That was a long one because it was a little hard. To get the mechanics working. I am sorry. But we can now continue past the tarantula hawk. Oh, this is fun. This is the uh, void worm, which we're not, we'll spawn it in the nether because I don't want it um, coming around here. This is an end boss, which you get by throwing a suspicious, a mysterious worm 
destroy the into the void. It didn't work because it died in the lava. It needs to go in the void. But he, this is like a full blown boss. And it's huge. And it like is really hard. Like it, 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 it fires homing projectiles like the shulker. And it teleports through portals. So that's going to go off and have fun. And we're never going to see it again because I hate it. Um, What it drops has two drops. It has... The eyeball and the void worm mandible should be crafted into a dimensional carver, which will slowly mine away at the fabric of reality and teleport you home. Which can and then that can be crafted and if you put that in a capsid, it'll turn into a shattered dimensional carver, which you can mine in the fabric of reality and it'll take you a million blocks in a certain direction. So Really cool, it's an actual boss, and it's a good way to get to the end of the world. So, S tier. Next up is the Frilled Shark. This guy kills squid and blobfish with shiny teeth underwater, and needs to be under 10 blocks of water in order to be normal. Um, and it can drop a special shark tooth, which can be turned into a special shield. But it only drops the shark tooth. Oh, other things with the Void Worm has this, can damage mobs with wind power by redstone, and also has this, the effigy. Um, where's the shield? The shield of the deep. And it gives, like, mobs that attack you. Cool effect. Like your game mode survival, like a bleeding effect. Here, come here. Like, so then I see how it was bleeding and taking damage. Wow, the bear killed the elephant. Uh, but the only way to get it is for it to attack mobs. So you kind of have to, like, let it do its thing, and sometimes it'll drop the tooth. Otherwise, I think I'm going to put this in B tier. Fish. Oh, this is a fun one. The Mimic Octopus. A lot of things to do with this. You get some lobster tails. You feed it up. You tame it. And uh, give it some... Mimic cream. And it becomes special. Special octopus. And when it, if you give it if you give it, let's say some gunpowder. Oh what the fuck? What the fuck? That's a that's a mod that I have. That's not Alex's mobs, so that's a different mod. Uh it'll turn into a creeper. And if let's say, what do you want to attack? Come over here. Are you following me, buddy? Let's have you attack this guy. Turn into a creeper, and it'll actually start blowing up, and like, it'll mimic a creeper, and blow up. And it has also really fast regeneration, so it's kind of hard to kill. It can also mimic... A guardian, if we give it prismarine. What do we want you to fight? Let's have you fight another mimic octopus. I guess it likes being a creeper on land. It can also mimic a guardian and shoot lasers. It can mimic a puffer fish, and I think that's it. So this is actually an S tier mob for me because it's so cool. It has so many uses. And it's a good defense. Wow. It's the, now they're going to be fighting for a long time. Oh, oh no, they're not. I guess the dice to that is enough damage. But they regenerate health pretty fast. Oh, that's a baby. I've not actually bred them before. That's cute. Uh, okay. And then also if you give them an ink sack, they'll like, they'll stop. Bro. Don't transform. Um, okay. But that's pretty cool. Next up. The seagull. These things are annoying. By default, they eat food out of your hotbar. They'll steal it and eat it. You can turn that off in the config, which I have, because it ate my eternal steak 
from an artifact in my survival world, which is an infinite food source. And now it's gone forever, and I don't have to get another one. So I'm pissed about that. So I hate seagulls. Um, F tier, F tier, F tier, F tier, F tier. Okay, we're getting into the, um, the dinosaur things now. The ancient creatures. This is the, uh... Ross Stalker. These are like the dinosaur-inspired mobs, ancient creature-inspired mobs. This spawns in the ice spikes biome, and uh, they're pretty neat. Uh, they uh, they turn that into ice, and uh, let's say they find themselves a Tusklin. We'll do two mobs in one. They'll be like, "Oh, I hate you." They'll be like, "I hate you so much." Show us. Yeah, there you go. And they'll also do this like spike attack. Which makes them lose their ice. But yeah, they'll fight Tusklins and then they'll lose their ice spikes at some point after doing that. And they have to go back into water or be in a cold biome to get them back. You can get a Frost Stalker Horn and make a Frost Stalker Helmet. And they will be your friends. Hey, I'm... Come with me. Uh, You are my minions now. They'll kind of follow you, and they'll attack what you wish. Go be you attack my little friend. No, because I think it's like tame. No, oh, oh, they're going for it. There we go. Oh, wow. That was crazy. Uh, okay. We'll take that off so they can go wander. The Frost Doctor. Fun mob. I'm going to put that be your custom mob for the ice spikes biome. The, fro the Tusklin spawns in cold biomes. It's kind of like a hoglin, except uh, more pissy. It's There's no way to like scare it. It likes mushrooms. I believe you got, you want this. And then you can pacify it that way. And if you get a saddle, no, you, no, no, you get not a saddle. Maybe a saddle. We'll, we'll see. Yeah, you get a saddle and you can ride on it, charging the mobs, and it'll throw you off after a little bit. If you get... It'll be Ancient Hog Shoes. This is a new trade from Piglins. If you barter with them, it's rare. And you can get some hog and you can ride them for longer. Boom. Boom. Oh, this is what they look like when they don't have their ice spikes, by the way. So the Tusklin is pretty cool, but it's also annoying. So it's going to go in C tier. And next up, we have... Oh, this is another nether, nether mob. The Leviathan. Uh, Put it in water. And it'll turn obsidian, by the way. Uh, you can ride these guys with up to four players. Using the Stradalite Tack and the Stradalite Saddle. And it'll ride it around. Ooh. Go back in the water, my friend. You're huge, actually, so uh, this is going to take a second. Sorry. Oh, they're getting pissed. Oh, it's actually riding it now. This is a completely passive mob. It'll actually like run away. But yeah, like it's like stuck on the back of it now. The other four mobs can ride it. Yeah, that's pretty fast. Uh, let's get you. Actually, can you come over here? There it went. In a little bit. That'll turn into an obsidian one. This is actually... I never used it, but it is really cool. And it can ride a bunch of players around in the lava. So I am going to give it an A here. Okay. Last uh, ancient mob, the Cosma. Spawns in the end. It's going up high because of stuff, I guess. Uh, it likes Cosmic Cod to tame. Uh, wait a minute. The actual item. Here, come here. 
and it's gonna, oh, it's gonna leave, so whatever. But basically, if you fall in the void, this guy will, like, pick you up, or if you fall too far, he'll pick you up, and he'll bring you down to land, or up to land, so you don't die. So basically, it saves you from the void. So if you're adventuring in the end, and, like, this is, this, this case, there's a potential list here. It can save your life. You never know. Okay, next up, we left off on the Cosmo. Next, where is this? Okay, Cosma. We have the Toucan. All right, first up, the Toucan. Love this guy. Give him a golden apple or an enchanted golden apple, and it'll absolutely go K-wire. Uh, basically, what he does is he plants saplings. Watch this. So you can make a tree farm this way. Like, you don't have to actually plant. So, if you give him, but it only, only, he has, he only has infinite trees if you give him an enchanted golden apple. other Or a golden apple for a little bit. He'll have it for a little bit if you give him a golden apple. Otherwise, you need to give him bananas for jungle or apples for oak. This is a way to make an automatic wood farm in theory. Pretty cool. So I'll put it in 8 theory because it's probably a little finicky actually. I've never tested it. Oh, what? Okay. Two can. That's so. Oh, there. Are, I guess we know what one of those next mobs is. Okay. Next up, the anaconda. It's gonna eat that guy, I'm sure. This guy, as you can see, wraps itself around mobs and then eats them. If it eats enough, oh my kangaroo died. Uh, if it eats enough mobs it'll shed its skin and if you get two, if you get two shed skin you're actually able to make yourself a pretty cool item and some leads or whatever, some vines you'd have vine lasso this is like a lead except it can't be oh this is, a, this is the obsidian thing by the way it looks pretty cool basically if you, it's like a lead except it can also do hostile mobs so let's actually get a a husk again Why did you go in the lava, bro? I missed. There. You can't put it on fences, but you can get hostile mobs on a leash, which is pretty useful. So I'm actually gonna put this guy in S tier. Just for like, you also put it on villagers, I think. So, pretty useful. Next up, the anteater. This guy is kind of like some, he's gonna come over here to the fence. I'll just demonstrate. He does not like anthills. He's going to get pissy with it. And I'll get some, uh, he'll, 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 he'll uh, dig up some Gonglidia. So, in theory, you can automate, like, Gonglidia farms like this. Basically, it's kind of just, it spawns in sparse jungles. He's kind of just to complement the ants. So, I will put him in C tier. Oh, yeah, the baby's go on the back as well. That's, that's, like, a recurring thing. Is that if a baby can go on someone's back or pouch... It will do that. Can you stop? Okay. Ant Eater. Next up, the Rocky Ruler. This is a hostile mob. Bonds and Dripstone Caves, which is already good. A custom I am a big fan of like unique mobs for biomes. So this attacks by like rolling around, then it drops its shell. And you can craft that into a rock shell chest plate. You equip this and you sprint. Boom. You're like Sonic. This is hilarious to me. And you sink in water, by the way. Like, it's hard to swim in water. I believe. So this guy, he gets a... Eight here. Alright, next up. The Flutter. This spawns in Lush Caves. And it like it, it, you can tame it with different flowers. I'm not gonna demonstrate because it's a pain in the ass, but you need a different type of flower for each feed, and then you can like pot it if it's tamed. Like here, like you can get like a potted flutter. And that'll put it in like the like. Give it a. Can I give you a pot, please? Please, I beg, I beg. It needs to be tamed, I suppose. Be a defense, and it'll attack for you. So. Unique, unique mob, but it doesn't do much, really. Let's see. Alright, next up, the Gelada Monkey. 
Let's see if we can get a big man. There we go, big man. This is the captain of the troop. Uh, and if we get another captain of the troop, sometimes they'll fight each other. Uh, they have these nice, like, red bellies. Oh, yeah, see, they're fighting. For, for the fighting for dominance of the troop. Oh, and then also they get pissy if you um, attack them, the whole group. But um, the tiger actually is going to win that, I believe, the entire fight. Oh, it's not. Uh, um, also, we get some grass. And some wheat. You want that? And then we'll start clearing grass for you. So, honestly, not that good, though. Just that you can just kind of like bless with hand or water. So that is going to give a a, uh, a D tier for me. Next up, we have the Jerboa. Cute little ambient mob spawns in the desert at night. But you can give it seeds. Got some seeds, buddy. And it'll give you the fleet-footed effect. Where if you sprint, you go, okay, decently fast. And if you sprint and jump, we all know sprint jumping is the fastest way to move without an elytra or a horse or something. But if you sprint jump with the fleet footed effect, you get big speed boost. This is actually pretty cool in my opinion, so I'm going to give it an A. I don't know, an a, a B, I mean. It's like if you just get one, it lasts for a whole 10 minutes. So if you want to travel somewhere and you have a Jerboa at your base, give it a few seeds and then you can like run off and you'll be faster. Okay, the Jerboa was our last one and it was around here. Okay, we have the Terrapin. Little turtles, they come in a lot of different colors. All in a lot, a lot. There's also a Koopa vari variety too. Lots of, I haven't seen a baby before, that's cute. They lay eggs, and you can bucket them. They're not tameable though. Yeah, that's a cool color. That That's also a really cool one, the red and black. Spider-Man 2099 maybe. Um, I saw that movie a little bit ago, it was pretty good. Uh, all right. Um, I didn't actually give that one a list on the tier. It's just kind of ambient. It spawns in rivers. For the breeding, it's cool, but it doesn't do much to the tier. Next up. Next up, getting rid of this tree. Uh, comb jelly. Put it in the water. Three different colors. Where's the blue one? Give me the blue one. There we are. Uh, they drop prismatic jelly. Or rainbow jelly. You give this to a mob. Boom. Pride month time. Rainbow. And if you name it trans pride, I believe it does the trans flag. Yeah. And if you're homophobic and want to get rid of it, you can always uh, sponge it off. So that's a pretty funny effect. It can also make prismatic glass. Or rainbow glass. I don't know why I call it prismatic. And that's pretty neat. It, it, it changes color depending on its position in the world. So that's pretty neat. Uh, we'll give this... a seed. They spawn, they spawn in frozen oceans at night, by the way. We'll give this a seed here. Okay, the cosmic cod... This is what you tame the Cosmos with, and basically if you hit one, they all teleport far away, I guess. Um, they spawn everywhere in the end, and they're kind of annoying if you have an Enderman farm, to be honest. So I'm going to give them, actually, an F, bro. Because you can make Cosmic Cod in a Capsid with regular fish, so there's actually no need for them. They just kind of piss me off. All right, next up is the bun fungus. These are mobs. Oh, what are you mad at, bro? Oh, the rocky roller. It hates hot. It hates hostile mobs. It absolutely de deplorable, in its, in its opinion. And it only spawns on mushroom islands. In in game, like this is like the in game lore that Alex came up with for why mushroom islands do not have mobs. It's because there's a bun fungus protecting it. They, they spawn rarely, but you can also see a rabbit and some mongol spores. 
which is dropped by a mungus, dungus like an egg is, is by a chicken, and it'll make yourself a button mungus. And if you give them a carrot, it'll heal them, and it'll make them passive. Okay, these guys are actually pretty fun. So I'm gonna give them an A. Next up we have the bison. These guys are cool. The baby is cute as well. They eat grass and you can shear them. They get bison fur, which can be made into bison block fur blocks and bison fur carpets, which is just kinda like a funny block to have to be honest. It's kinda like ooh, look at me, I hunted a bison. Uh, otherwise, it's strong, it hits you sometimes, if you get close to it, it charges, they charge each other. They spawn in the plains biome and meadows, I think meadows, I'm not sure. Uh-oh. Oh, there you go. Uh, D tier, honestly, they look really cool, but, like, actually, just, like, straight up no use. What the fuck? Don't do that. Okay. Next up, we have the giant squid. Can you stop? Oh my god. Oh my god. How much health? It's breaking the fucking signs. I don't know why. I, I need it to go away. I think it's the bison that's doing that, actually. They drop beef, too, by the way. A lot of it. Okay. Put that back. Next up is the giant squid. These guys don't like being on land or in low in, in shallow water. And they uh they uh, can drop pentacles if attacked by a whale, and which can be turned into a grappling squawk. And you can shift to repel if you if you bring it back. If you have an elytra on, this is where the real fun begins, guys. Here. Okay, let's see. So basically, the easy way to demonstrate is to go up. Okay. So we're gonna hit up there. Oh, I have to time this right. Basically, you grappling squawk, elytra, and shift, and you get like a boost. But like, if you do it from a far enough away, it's a pretty cool boost. Okay. So for that, I'm gonna give it an A, a tier. For just, for, just for like the grappling hook. Alright, next up, the rarest mob, the rarest mob in the game. This is the Devil's Hole Pupfish. It only spawns in one chunk in the entire, oh, that's a big one. I didn't know they could get that big, bro. Uh, they are the rarest mob in the game, only spawning in a singular chunk. The only way to find this is with a strange fish finder. Crafted from the whale thing. And it'll send you in the direction of it. I guess it's not really going to work in this world, is it? Because there's only plans bounds. Um, but basically, you can also find them in villages. There, there is a mob. There is a... If, if you have domestication innovation. Also by Alex. Then... There's a new village profession that has a house and villages that Devil Soul Puffish can spawn in. So play with both mods and you easily get them. Otherwise, they are the rarest mob in the game. They only spawn in one chunk. Hard to get. Uh, basically, it's another flex. It's another flex tier item, so I'm going to put it in A. Okay, next is the catfish. They come in three sizes. 
large, medium, and small. Uh, small ones can eat a stack of items. Up to a stack. Do it for me. Nom nom nom. Hum nom 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 nom. The, the medium one can eat like nine stacks, and the big one can eat a small mob. You can then bucket all three sizes and transport them, so they're kind of like a mini shulker. But uh, I don't use them too much, and they also damage the mob that they eat, I believe. But they do, they do, they do drop food. So we'll put it in C tier. Okay. Let's, like, do our inventory. And then we have, after the catfish, we're getting close to the end now. Uh, catfish was here. Alright, next we have the flying fish. These guys come in a few colors. And you know what the flying fish do, I'm sure. They fly out of the water sometimes and then they drown themselves. Like, there you go, you're dead 100%. Um, they drop flying fish, which can be used to make flying fish boots. Which lets you, if you're in water, leap out of it. If you have an elytra, this gives you a boost. It's like, it's like early game Riptide. So I will give it a D because they're not completely useless. Okay. Next we have the Skellawag. These spawn. Oh yeah, the bone fungus is gonna piss off. Um, basically they attack super super fast, as you can see, and sometimes they drop a thing that is usually the craft the fish finder thing, and they spawn near uh, shipwrecks, and they are so fucking annoying F tier. All right, next up was the rain frog. Comes in a few varieties. And they make, um, cute little noises. They spawn in the deserts when it rains. And if you give them a disc, like, let's see, pig step and the jukebox, it will dance and cause it to rain. But it's not going to rain, I believe, because they have weather, so the so weather's the false. But yeah, they do it a little dance. I'll, I give these guys, because it's it's the ability to summon rain is pretty neat, so I'm actually going to give them an E tier. Okay, next up, the Potu. The Potu. Oh, I, that looks so weird because I forgot they look that goofy. This is um a mob. You need the falconry glove to hold it, and you can hold it. It's pretty cool. Give. There. And basically, their eyes get bigger the darker it gets. Until completely, it is completely dark, and mobs can spawn. They will start making noises. This is basically a glare. That's what it is. Yeah. They don't like. And they're goofy looking. So they, I'm gonna give them a C. They don't do much. They spawn in dark oak forests. Next up is the Mud Skipper. Tameable, they shoot mud balls, they spawn in mangrove forests. And sometimes they'll do a little fight like thing when there's two of them. Also, a C tier. Not much to say on those guys besides they're cute. Alright, the Rhinoceros. Spawns in savannas. You get yourself a pillager. It'll uh it'll it'll say fuck all risk its life and kill it. It hates them. It is it is it is a mad boy. Oh, yeah, I pissed off the bun fungus accidentally. Um, but basically, you can also give it potions. Give it a potion of jump boost, and it will apply that. No, let's give it a potion of speed. The most easy to see, right? Potion of swiftness. Pillager. Yeah, it'll give them that effect. For, but it doesn't last forever. It only lasts for a few uses. Uh, cool mob helps you with raids. Give it a... But, like... 
Yeah, yeah, I guess it does help with raids. I'll give you, but you can make a raid farm, but those are hard. Be here. Okay. Sugar gliders are next. Huzzah. You can tame them with sweet berries. They spawn in birch forests. Very cute. And put it on your head. You get slow fall. Alright. And they do this little cute little animation when they're staying. So I will give you a C for being cute and for having one use. Uh, okay, next up. This mob is the Farseer. It spawns at the world border. Which is why you need the Dimensional Carver to get there. Basically, it's... See that? Like, spawns in and it gets pissed at things. It's like, it's like a being from another world, like, outside of the our dimension. And if you kill it, you get Farseer arms, you can make a transmutation table. And it blows up when you break it and drops the nether star that you used to craft it. Uh, basically, you go in here, give it an item, it makes another item. And the more of one item you give it, the more likely you are to get that item as a opposite opportunity. You're seeing a lot of blaze rods now because I've in, in copper because I've done that a few times. Okay, that's what that does. Farseer, very like unique and cool mob. I'm gonna put it in the S tier. All right, this is our last few mobs. Next up is the Screecher. This is a Skulk mob. Oh, it's taller than I thought. That's absolutely horrifying. When it sees a player... All it does is make a lot of fucking noise. It's so annoying. But it has, a little, it has like, no health, though. Um... It basically what it does is it activates the warden. It spawns in a deep dark. So basically, like, it's just a big, like, fuck you. Like, if you get, if, it, if it sees you and starts making all that noise, the warden spawns, and then you're cucked. So, this goes in F tier. Deep dark already annoying though. Um, but it does have a use. That is to make the Skulk Boomer. You power this with redstone. And there is a poor little sugar glider right there that is going to get uh absolute hello. Uh hello. It is supposed to do a thing. When activated by a nearby skulk sensor. Oh, so it's probably off right now, actually. Skulk. Oh, I... Sensor? Oh, it's a C. Okay, whatever. There you go. It, and it kills things. Sends that out in a wave, and it basically just damages. So that's a cool item. Otherwise, like, whatever. It's a really fucking annoying. And it's really loud. Next up, the Underminer. There's a few varieties of these guys. Like that. There's a Hero Brian 1. There's a Steve 1 2. What are you doing? Good, bro. Basically, these guys spawn after you... Where did you go, my friend? Uh, go on, I suppose. I guess they can phase two blocks, which is cool. Basically, if you're in an abandoned mineshaft for a long time, they will spawn. You kill them, which I, which you can in creative, but in survival, you can't with your fists. You need splash damage potions of harming or something. And when you kill them, they have a chance to drop their pickaxe, the ghostly pickaxe, which is, um, when you mine blocks, it's like, it'll, uh, store them like a shulker box. Let's actually demonstrate because it's a little confusing.
If your inventory is full, I think it does it. And oh my lord! Don't want it. <laughs> my God. Uh, if you st but these blocks basically. Oh, here we go. It'll store. I think no. Um, it it'll store it like a bundle, and you can right click and it'll deposit the box. But I think you need a full inventory. All right. The underminer, pretty cool. Overall, like not that useful though, because you just have a shulker box in your inventory. But like, and, I, and it's hard to get. So I'll give it a C. As, actually, as an ambience mob, it's really good. S tier ambience mob, but like, kind of a D tier regular mob. So, like, it goes B. Alright, a B. I mean, yeah. So next is the Murmur. These now spawn in the cherry groves, but they also spawn really deep in the world. Basically, I'm gonna come all the way over here and do a game mode survival. And this thing is not gonna like it. It's oh my god, yeah, it's absolutely awful. Yeah, like fuck, fuck you. Oh, yep. Horrifying, you know. Horrifying, horrifying stuff. Um, and it drops its kimono. Which basically makes undead creatures become neutral and it increases your attack range. It also drops tendon fibers. Elastic tendons, which are used to make the tendon whip. Uh, overall, cool weapon. So I'm going to put it in D tier because otherwise it's annoying. It's fucking, it's going to spawn in. There it goes. I mean, it's even more annoying now. Okay, our last two mobs, I think. Yeah, in our last three. We have the skunk. This guy gets upset when you hit him, and then he'll, he'll skunk everywhere, you know. And you get, it gives you the nausea. And mobs don't like it when you have the, um, and you, and, and you can also bottle that. Watch this. Bottle of stink, bro. You can get the bottle of stink in a bottle, and you can place it back down, too. Walking on this gives you nausea as well, I think. Um, basically you craft that into and use ammo as ammo for Stink Ray. Like from Minions. It's hilarious. And there is a really funny fart noise. Let's see if we can get it. There it goes. It was like the, it's like the reverb one. Basically if you do this on a mob, everything gets annoyed at it. So like, let's do it on this, um, let's do it on this Rhino. And see, they get mad at it. Because they don't like it when the mob is stinky. So it basically just turns things on each other. Cool, in cool use. They spawn in like forests and taigas. I'm gonna give it a C. That is the banana slug. Alright, next up, the banana slug. These come in four different colors. And this is such a fucking useful mob. You might not think it, but it really is. You kill it, it drops banana slug slime, it also drops that regularly, regularly like an egg. You turn that banana slug slime into a banana slug slime block, which when placed in water, gets rid of it, and it is turned into this crystallized banana slug mucus, which decays when there is no slime block nearby. This makes clearing water, like if you're clearing an ocean monument, so much easier if you have enough. You can just spam pick up, spam pick up, and there's blocks so it can't flow back in. This makes the banana slug big S tier. Alright, the final mob in Alex's mobs in this version, there's actually two more in the version that I, I don't have on me right now. So I'm actually going to, I will go into that and then we'll come back. Actually, no, we won't. I'll just put them on the tier list as an item. This is the Blue Jay. Give it glowberries. And a raccoon glowberries. Hey, buddy. Like that. And it'll group up. Give it seeds. It'll show you mobs. 
It'll sing and make and it'll give mobs the glowing effect. Basically, uh, it, it's good for having like a little a, a guy with your raccoon. It's pretty cute, and it shows you where caves might be and where mobs are spawning. Could be good for making a farm if you don't have a perimeter. So I will put it in the B tier. Okay, the other two mobs that we don't have in the version I'm in, I'm sorry I didn't think that far ahead, are the caiman, which will be represented with a crocodile scoot. Um, the caiman is a, the caiman is a tameable mob that spawns in mangrove forests, and it basically like is it's kind of like a puppy, which is kind of like a puppy gator. So I'm gonna put it. It's cute, but honestly, D. Next up is the Triops, which we will use. Uh, we will represent with catfish. Triops is like a shrimp, and it spawns in the desert, in pools of water, I believe. And what it does is you can breed it and it'll make these eggs you pick up the eggs and you can turn it into this like soup with other things that makes crimson mosquitoes scared of you otherwise it's a nice aquarium pond but because it can make crimson mosquitoes go away i'm gonna put it in a tier uh actually no, you know what we're gonna do we're gonna do science Triops. And Cayman. We'll give it glow ink. And there we go. That's our tier list. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you have enjoyed. Hopefully... I'm sorry this video was two hours, by the way, but we're going to leave it all in. It's then it's going to be a long watch. Hopefully, if you're at the end here, this convinces you to play Alex's Mobs. It's a great, great, great mod. More to come from it in future versions. Check out Alex's Discord. And, uh, on, and you can probably find the link on CurseForge. I'm not going to edit the description too much. But, um... Thank you guys for watching. If you have enjoyed, consider subscribing, liking, commenting. It helps me out a lot. And it helps you out too if you enjoy the content. Anyways, I'll see you later. Peace.